This is video 3 for week 1 of EDUC 2160, Online Learning Theories and Models. And this video is a brief overview about the software tools used and their different affordances in this course. So starting off with the analysis questions, we're going to be uh, thinking about which competencies need to be accessed or developed in this course which tools make use of synchronous technologies and how can you tell if a tool is synchronous or not, and which tools allow for the creation of information and or projects that will be used to facilitate the course activities. So before jumping into the tools themselves, we'll take a quick look at human-computer, um, human interaction model, and this is Desjardins and others. It was used with permission, and basically it tries to illustrate the different types of competencies and the different types of affordances between technology and humans. So you can think of affordances as the quality of an object to provide or make a specific function available to the users. Competencies are the quality of individuals who have been adequately or well qualified to use those functions. The HCHI model is used as a basis for determining competencies which will be addressed by the technology affordances embedded in the software tools. So just taking a moment to look a bit deeper into this model, we have some technology competencies required and there's an interaction between the learner and the technology that involves things like navigating the user interface, etc. Then we have some social competencies required and these are interactions between learners that use the affordances of communication provided by the technology. So, for example, discussion groups. We have some informational competencies within this model, and those are things like finding, sorting, creating, aggregating, filtering, and connecting information using the technologies. And then we have some epistemological competencies. And this is all about creating and modifying knowledge or new understandings using the technology in order to solve specific problems. And this is coming out of the work done by Desjardins, Laclasse, and Bellaire. And the article um, is in the reference list in this PowerPoint's presentation. And so I'd encourage you to take a look at the link. It's provided at the end. And read through the article, because it'll give you a sense, a little bit more of the distinction between competencies and affordances. So we're going to take a look at some of the the technology competencies required in this course and in the program. And we'll start with video conferencing. So the first one, and arguably the most important, is the Adobe Connect. Um, this program is entirely online, and it uses Adobe Connect for all of the synchronous communications. Everyone is asked, all of you as learners, are asked to have the necessary computer resources and the ability to join and maintain in an Adobe Connect session in order to participate in these classes. So these requirements are posted in the course outline. They're posted in the program description. And what I've provided you here with is a link, um, just a tutorial about generally what is Adobe Connect. So you can think of it as more of a desktop video conferencing type of a tool. And then it has a bunch of other tools within it as well, like whiteboards and the ability to put people in groups and such, which we'll get into as we use them. We use Adobe Connect um, in this course it is required. We use it for our tutorials. And so you'll be participating in those once a week and uh, getting to experience the software. And we will also be using it for when you present back on some of your problem-based learning activities. Two other optional pieces of quote-unquote video conferencing software that you can use um, are Skype, which many people are familiar with. And uh, I have put the link there to a little tutorial around Skype. And another one that's sort of newer to this game is Google Hangouts, which is a video conferencing um, type of sharing experience. Both Skype and Google Hangouts may be very useful for you in your problem-based learning teams. When you're doing group work and you just need to connect, um, you're always able to use the Adobe Connect general room for the program, so that will always be available. But you may find that other people might be in there at the time your group is able to connect, in which case Skype or Google Hangouts will be some viable backups for you. Just a bit of a reminder around the software required in this program. Um, we need a computer with an operating system at basis, Windows XP, Mac OS 10, 
uh, 10.5x Linux, that sort of thing. Video capabilities need to be either with a built-in or an external webcam. And the audio capabilities, um, some people in their webcams you actually have an audio as well, the mic in. And what we find is that creates quite a bit of feedback because your mic is always on. So we would ask that for audio that you get a headset microphone. Um, using the external speakers, using the external mic on the video cams that are out now just creates too much feedback. So if you pop into one of the great shops, Future Shop or whatever, pick up uh, just a USB compatible headset that has the mic that would just be perfect. You also may find that you may use several of what we use in this course on your mobile devices like laptops, your iPod, your smartphone, your tablets. Um, and so that's absolutely fine. There's actually an app for Adobe Connect, there's an app for Blackboard and so you may be able to participate that way as well. Uh, the most important piece of course is the internet access. So you need sufficient speed or bandwidth to allow full audio and video participation. So this connection needs to be accessed from home um, because generally we have found that schools have firewalls that block many of the features of the course such as video conferencing. But you may find a way to work around the firewall or you may find that they don't. So it's all about testing and double checking. But in order to verify the adequacy of your connection, you should run the Adobe Connect self-test and there's a link in the, the PDF here that will help you. So there's going to be a PDF of this PowerPoint in the course and you can look for the link around the self-test. And then if you go to speedtest.net, um, it will give you a sense of your internet connection speed. And the minimum speeds should be greater than 1 megabits per second download and a 0.5 megabits per second upload. The upload speed is really important because that will help with minimizing the delay in some of our synchronous materials. Um, like all software, there's minimum requirements for Adobe Connect and you need to ensure that your laptop or your desktop system meets those requirements. And once a sense that once the session is finished in Connect, ending the meeting allows the system to put the bandwidth elsewhere. Um, so there's lots of guidelines about making your synchronous online experience the most enjoyable for everybody. And in the PDF of this um, PowerPoint of this video, there are the links for Adobe Connect tutorials, the self-check, the speedtest.net, that sort of thing. Um, and then as I put on the slide, Skype and Google Hangouts are also an option. Some of the other software that we will be using are in the course are collaborative document production and editing. Many of you may have already used Google Docs. Um, if not, I encourage you to go in. There's a little YouTube video link there. Um, just go in and play around. It's very straightforward. It basically allows users that have the you know be able to log in and edit and work on the same document. Um, it's very interesting. They've added some synchronous functionality. So you can, multiple users can simultaneously edit and modify a Google Doc and everything is uploaded onto the site. So this is very, very useful in your planning and in your projects. I've also put up another one. Um, it is a pay service, but they have a 30 day free trial. It's called Basecamp and um, I've used it on several of my projects. It's very useful because you can keep all your files in one location. They have a whiteboard which functions like the Google Docs. Um, you can do discussion postings within Basecamp and it notifies the project team so to speak. So it's something I wanted to put here. Uh, just You may not use it for the program but it may be something that's useful in other aspects of your work. The other piece of software that we'll be working through obviously is Blackboard um, and this is around discussion blogs and journaling. So Blackboard is our main discussion board for the course and uh, you can get in and get an intro video to Blackboard off of this link and this is how we'll be communicating back and forth and putting in our thoughts and comments on the different topics of the week. You can do blogging within Blackboard um, and we may be using the journaling tool as well. You may choose to use it just within your group to journal your thoughts and ideas as you're working through your problem-based learning. A couple of other options. Um, Twitter is an optional uh, for discussions and for backing and forth, uh, as is Prezi. 
And uh, Prezi is more like a presentation style software, so an alternative to PowerPoint. Um, and it's something your teams might like to consider, your groups might like to consider as you get into your pr problem based learning for the course and you decide how you want to present it back to us. So Prezi is an option there worth pursuing. Instant messaging, you may find in your group it's easier just to quickly set up a time to meet by using your text um, instant messaging tool. So there's lots of different ones here that I've put up there um, and many more that aren't even up there. So I'll leave it to you to explore those as well. And then the final piece around software in the program are video viewing, posting, and concept mapping. In this course we will be doing concept maps and we will be doing a lot of video. So you're watching this video now on YouTube. Um, you may want to post your own. That might be how your group decides to do its presentation back on its problem-based learning. Um, so getting in and experiencing, if you haven't yet, how to post and create videos and upload them into YouTube on your channel is very useful. I've put a link in the slide. It's a bit old, so you'll want to go in and, uh, and just spend some time playing around in YouTube so you're comfortable with it. The last bullet point is called CMAP. Um, it's required because we're going to use concept mapping as it's actually one of your first assignments. It's basically a visual way of representing your ideas. Um, CMAP is free, which is why it's there. There are lots of other programs that do concept mapping. Inspiration is a very popular one. Um, many of you who are K-12 teachers may already have a license for it, so you're more than welcome to use Inspiration. Um, and there are several others out there, so please feel free. It doesn't have to be CMAP. It's, I'm presenting you with that one because it is at no charge. And then this was the article I was mentioning earlier where that um, human computer human interaction sort of framework came around competencies and affordances of technology. And so I'd encourage you to take a look at that. That's the link to it. And then just to finally wrap up, these are our synthesis questions for this video clip. And so I'd encourage you to take some time, read these, think back, replay if you need to. Um, and then we'll be talking about this with our tutorial group this week. So why would the social competency not be called a communication competency? Which competencies would be included in Web 2.0, which is social network designation and why? And which competencies would be included in Web 3.0, which is a semantic web designation and why? And then your thoughts around what benefits does video conferencing provide for an online course? So we'll leave that with you and look forward to discussing those in our tutorial session this week. Thank you.